Good afternoon, everybody, Uneducated Economist here. So this is going to be part two of the series of economic collapse, what's going on in a nutshell. Um, the first video we were talking about how money is created gets into the system. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave a link down in the description. I suggest you go and watch that one because this is going to be a carry on from that video. Um, but even if you haven't watched it, I think this video would probably be just fine to watch all on its own. So let's get started with it. Now, what I'm gonna talk about now is interest rates. And really the biggest thing that the Federal Reserve is trying to deal with is the demand for their liabilities, which is how much money in circulation currency is out there and being used. And then the other thing is interest rates, like where the Fed funds level is. So those are like the two things that they have going on, these different levels. And the Federal Reserve, when they manipulate these two different rates, right, how much currency is in the system in the Fed funds level, it puts a perception into the market, right, before these interest rates actually have an impact on the market. Now, if you go and you look back to 2001, the Federal Reserve knew, they knew way back then that they eventually would have run into the lower bound of zero which means that interest rates could not go any further without being negative, right? They hit the lower bound of zero. Now that's what they refer to it as, is the lower bound. <clears throat> but the, the, the Federal Reserve knew at the time, because it was in the Ben Bernanke speech from 2001, they knew this was gonna be an issue and that deflation was going to be a problem, but that they could prevent deflation and that they should at any cost. And that was the major problem, was a deflationary scenario that the Federal Reserve is fearing. This collapse of the currency, this shrinking of debt. Now, when you look at that Ben Bernanke speech, in that speech, when he says that we would run into the lower bound of zero where dropping of interest rates would no longer be an effective tool for stimulating the economy, because typically the Federal Reserve would want to drop interest rates around 5%, that dropping of 5% on the Fed funds level would eventually find its way into the markets, into the credit markets for mortgages, cars, you know, credit cards, whatever. And that money would be spent into the economy and this would stimulate the economy. So the Fed dropping of interest rates of that 5% would really get the economy moving again. Now, when the interest rates became low, it became an ineffective tool and they knew that was going to happen. And that's what Ben Bernanke was saying in that speech, is that this is going to be a problem. However, there's other tools that they can use other than dropping of interest rates in order to stimulate the economy. And this is where I get the credible threat theory from. It's not necessarily a theory. I mean, they straight up say it, right? They say we are jawboning or giving forward guidance, right? But all of it is still the same idea of credible threats. Uh, what was it? Uh, over at Bingo, I had a couple say that it was moral swagen, swagen. Uh, I forget how they say it, but they had a term for it as well. And this is where the Federal Reserve puts out a perception of what it is that they are going to do to try and get the markets to behave before they actually act, before the Fed actually acts, right? So now the market is anticipating whatever it is that the Fed is saying that they're going to do. Now, the easiest way to understand that is with a little parable, a little story that he tells inside of that speech about a guy who invents a gold machine. With this gold machine, he can produce as much gold at will with very little cost or energy. The moment that this information gets out that this guy can have this machine, before he even produces the machine, before he even produces any gold, just the credible threat alone that he can do it would be enough to start getting the markets to sell all that gold off because this guy's gonna be able to start producing it at very low cost. So just the credible threat alone would get the markets to start to react before anything even happens. So this is really what the Federal Reserve was saying in this speech is that, you know, and this is way back in 2001 before any, you know, issues were coming up with, you know, the great financial crisis and all that other stuff. I mean, it was long before that, but they knew that they need to have these tools ready in order to use them. So. When it comes to interest rates, we had a dropping of interest rates during the quantitative easing. So we had the great financial crisis and the interest rates at the time were, I think on like on a mortgage were like six and a half percent or so. The Fed had to drop the interest rates in order to stimulate the economy. At that time, they hit the lower bound of zero, right? And they knew at the time, they said, okay, this is, this is not enough dropping of interest rates in order to, to stimulate the economy. We're going to have to do something else. And that's where the quantitative easing programs came in. 
Now this quantitative easing programs, this is something we talked about in the last video, but very quickly is when the Federal Reserve buys treasuries from the big banks who have purchased those treasuries from the treasury auction. Now those treasuries end up on the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve and the money that they have printed up ends up on the bank's balance sheet. Pretty much ends up as digital digits on, as reserves and really don't end up into the economy until they are lent into existence. But the idea of all this money printing will get the people out there believing that there is going to be inflation coming into the future. And if you can convince the people that there is going to be inflation, then what, do you, what they will do is they will start behaving in a way that will actually cause inflation to start to happen. They will go out there and spend more money on things that they typically wouldn't spend in anticipation that they're going to be paying a higher price going into the future. And this is really the idea behind the quantitative easing programs is to convince people that there is going to be some massive like injection of money going into the system that is going to blow everything up as far as prices goes. But what ends up happening is, is that money ends up going into asset prices like the stock market and the bond market and to, you know, things that you have to borrow money to, to, to buy. And this is where all this money ends up flowing into. It didn't really flow into the commodities or the, you know, the things that we buy on a regular basis during that time. Like we noticed it, we saw the housing market, we saw the asset prices, we saw like the stock market, all that stuff took off. But the, the, the consumers things that we typically buy didn't really move that much. All that quantitative easing didn't create the 2% target inflation that the Federal Reserve was looking for. In fact, they failed to achieve it a few, most of the time and only were above it just a little bit during the last 10 years. So this is what the Federal Reserve experienced when they dropped the interest rates and hit the lower bound is that they knew, man, this is not good. Now, at the end of the quantitative easing programs around, what was it, 2017, 18, they were in an autopilot program. So again, guys, I'm trying to blast through a lot of this stuff just to get you guys to understand it. So the quantitative easing had had ended they're going to try and go into quantitative tightening where they're bringing back that currency they're you know going to reel in you know the the irrational exuberance because everything has moved up all the asset prices have moved up really high so now the federal reserve is going to move into a quantitative tightening and they called it autopilot where they were going to lift interest rates a quarter point every quarter and for the foreseeable future right and this perception pissed the markets off they did not like this at all Right. And so as the Federal Reserve was trying to be like, hey, we're just benign here and things are just going to go on as as normal with this continual interest rate hikes, the markets were just like not having it. And so it got to the point where the Federal Reserve was realizing, man, if we don't do something here pretty soon, we are going to have some issues. And they had to what a lot of people said immediately reverse course on the Fed funds rate. But they didn't really immediately reverse course. What they did do was they stalled out. And they and they held them there for quite a while. Now you got to think this is 2018 that this is starting to take place. That they're having this issue with the markets coming down, and you know they had to stall out as far as lifting of the interest rates. Very something very interesting starts to happen right here because if you go and you look at a speech, and I'm going to leave both the Ben Bernanke speech and a John Williams speech down in the description of this video. If you go and you read the John Williams speech you're going to see that in that speech, they are concerned about deflation. Now, they, remember, the speech is given in November of 2018. So in this speech, he is very concerned about deflation. And there's three main concerns that the Federal Reserve is, is has on their mind is that there is a demographics problem. There's an older population. Older populations don't really like to spend money, and therefore that would cause more deflation if the older population is growing and they don't like to spend money, right? It's the younger growing families that like to spend money and there is less family formation taking place and stuff like that. So they knew that the demographics problem was going to be an issue. The other thing there was slowing growth, slowing productivity growth that was all, you know, having issues as far as the deflationary scenario. And the last one was, was the interest rates. And this is where it gets really interesting because the interest rates on the US treasuries were very low at the time and the spread <clears throat> excuse me and the spread between them and the corporate debt was much higher and they wanted to shrink that that that's that gap between the two and now I don't think they necessarily wanted to bring the corporate debt down as much as they wanted to bring the US treasury interest yields up right and now 
this is the reason why, and a lot of people don't talk about this, right? and this is where it gets really confusing if you're already confused by all this already, because putting this into a nutshell isn't easy. So this is where it gets confusing. In order to really come off of a deflationary um, situation where you have low, low interest rates, because a low or the low neutral interest rate world does not provide a return on capital investment that really stimulates the economy all on its own, like getting the economy chugging and moving along. Now, think about it like this, okay? If you had earned a million dollars or say just inherited a million dollars back in the early 80s, you could have lent that money to the US government for 10 years and earned a 15, 10 to 15% interest on it. Right? So that's somewhere between 100 and 150,000 dollars a year. Not a bad return for loaning a million dollars to the US government. Today it's going to be somewhere around 40,000 dollars if you did that same thing. Not exactly a great income considering the environment we we're in. So back in the early 80s, you could think about how higher interest rates was actually stimulating the economy with the return on capital investment. Today, the return on capital investment is pretty much negative as once you have lent your money out to the government, the return on it does not provide you with the purchasing power that beats the inflation. You see what we're getting at here is that as you loan your money out, you're actually losing purchasing power every time you do this. And this is a deflationary scenario. And the Federal Reserve knows this, right? And a lot of people don't really talk about this, this return on capital investment slowing the economy down. So now the Federal Reserve knows that lifting of interest rates is going to get the economy chugging along again as the return on capital investment starts to stimulate the economy and the return into investment continues onward. Whew. Okay, so here we go. Right now, we are sitting in a position in which the Federal Reserve is trying to lift interest rates as quickly as possible, right? Because back in 2018, when they ended up having to drop interest rates back to zero for the pandemic purposes, because we went through 2019 with all the issues and there was slowdown. You can go back and look at my videos. We were talking about like mill curtailment after mill curtailment. I was focusing in on the lumber industry. We knew that there was going to be a recession kicking in. Everybody was talking about it, but then the pandemic kicked in, right? So 2019, like nobody talks about how we were definitely going towards a recession that everybody just kind of forgot about. And then the pandemic kicked in and everybody says, this is a pandemic induced recession. I mean, I don't know how many times I heard the COVID recession, COVID recession, it was, oh, it, was bull it was BS. It was happening anyway, the Federal Reserve needed to cover it up. Anyway, so this gave the Federal Reserve all the room in the world to drop interest rates back down to zero. However, the dropping of interest rates to zero wasn't going to be a stimulating, wasn't going to be enough to stimulate the economy on its own because it's not going to get people out there borrowing money. Considering that we were going into recession, people were losing their jobs. So they sold everybody, to, sold everybody on the idea, I guess, but told everybody to go home. They said, go home, don't go to work, right? Don't pay your rents, don't pay your mortgage payment, we're gonna cover all this stuff up. There's a housing market collapse taking place, but we're gonna cover all this up by telling everybody to stay home and not go to work and not pay their rent and not pay anything. We're gonna cover up all this housing market crash, and then we're gonna drop interest rates down as low as we can, and this is really where the effect started to kick in because now people had interest rates at almost zero when it comes to US treasuries. They were very low, and that risk or the risk on started to take place because they were looking for the return on investment, right? The return on capital investment. The only place they could find it was in corporate debt. And everybody knew the corporations were going to fail, that they weren't gonna do well during this pandemic because everybody was getting sick and dying and whatever, right? However, the Federal Reserve had an unusual and exigent circumstance. Now, this is very important because this is a tool that they would never have been able to use and nobody knew about it unless you have an unusual and exigent circumstance and unless you are already privy to the tools that can be used during an unusual and exigent circumstance, nobody saw the special purpose vehicles coming, especially the corporate debt lending facility, right? This corporate debt lending facility was funded with hundreds of billions of dollars and then the narrative was put out there that the Federal Reserve was going to be buying this corporate debt. That narrative, that credible threat was enough to drive the markets into the corporate debt, trying to front run the Federal Reserve, thinking the Federal Reserve was going to be buying this corporate debt. The Federal Reserve sat back. They did buy a little bit, right? They put out the credible threat. They bought a little bit of this corporate debt because they had the authority to do it because of the unusual and exigent circumstance. And the market took care of business for them, right? Boom, down comes the corporate debts. They finally got what they wanted. They had a demographics problem. 
All right? Too many old people? Well, I'm not trying to say that they killed off all the old people. What will we have during the COVID event, right? A bunch of people died. They had a productivity growth. Think about the demand, the un... What was it? The um, overwhelming consumer demand. Remember the hearing about that? That all through prior during the pandemic, the stimulus checks caused an overwhelming consumer demand. Well, I told you that overwhelming consumer demand was fake and eventually we were going to run into gluts and, you know, overwhelming like amount of inventory. And that's exactly what would happen. But think about it, right? So we had a demographics problem. We had a productivity growth problem, right? So productivity growth took off like a crazy banshee, right? During that time. And what was the last thing? The yields between the corporate debts and the safe U.S. treasuries was too wide. Boom, they slammed that thing closer together. They got all three of those things that John Williams was saying was a problem inside of that speech, right? Now think about it. This is the New York Fed President John Williams giving this speech, talking about this. Inside of that speech, he goes on to say that the Federal Reserve can, in the target inflation was no longer an effective tool, that they were going to have to go into something else like average inflation rate. And that is something that nobody is now talking about is that the Federal Reserve is not shooting for the 2% target. What they are shooting for is an average inflation rate, right? And an average inflation rate is something over time and they don't really describe exactly how they figure that out. And nobody really talks about this average inflation rate. So the Federal Reserve is trying to get those Fed funds rate up to 5% as quickly as possible, right? Now they've gone up, what, three quarters of a point, three quarters of a percentage point, three quarters of a percentage point to try and get it up to that 5% as quickly as possible. The lag time between the time the Federal Reserve lifts interest rates to the time it actually starts to impact the economy is six months to a year. So if you want to know where the Fed funds rates are affecting the economy in real time right now, pull up the Fed, I'll go and grab the a chart for it. I'll go grab the link and I'll put it down in the description. Go and look at the Fed funds rate. Go back one year to six months and whatever the interest rates are in there, that's what's impacting the economy right now. Not what the Fed funds are at at this moment. That's not impacting the economy. It's impacting the markets for sure, but it's not impacting the, the economy as of yet, right? Give it six months to a year. Those interest rates will eventually find their way into the economy and that will start causing some serious pain. We're going to feel it coming into the future if they do not reverse. And I have no anticipation that they are planning on doing a reversal of these Fed funds level, right? Everybody says they're going to pivot. Don't count on it. I do not believe that one little bit. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't really a nutshell. That was really long. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.